The purpose of this video is to walk through the process of building a template for conducting hypothesis tests. Particularly, we're going to be working in situations where the central limit theorem applies, in other words, where we have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30, or where we have a reasonable expectation that the population is distributed normally. Uh, together we're going to walk through a scenario and we're going to build out all of the calculations that we'll need in order to conduct a hypothesis test for the population mean. And this particular template is for scenarios where the sample standard deviation can be calculated uh, but where the population standard deviation is unknown. In other words, we will be working with the t-distribution. So I have an Excel file here that contains a random sample of hypothetical exam grades. This is going to be our sample. So from here we need to get the input for our template, uh, the sample size, the sample average, and the sample standard deviation. In order to do that, I will go to data, data analysis. If your um, Excel does not have the data analysis button under the data tab, uh, click the link that is appearing now in order to see how to install the data analysis tool pack. The option that we want, there are a host of options under the data analysis button. We are looking for descriptive statistics and for input range we will select the label and all of the data. We will indicate that there are labels in the first row only if you have highlighted the label. And for output, we want summary statistics and we'll go ahead and indicate that we want those in a new worksheet and say OK. Excel has calculated a bunch of results for us. I'm going to split screen by clicking window and left and then on my template I will click window and right and we will begin to fill this in. The count is 35 so our sample size is 35. The sample average I will just hit control C. Instead of hitting control V if I right click and then click on this option it will leave the formatting the same and only put the uh, input the number. So for sample standard deviation, I will do the same thing. Control C, then I will right click and choose the 1, 2, 3 option or paste values. Now, so we have our sample size, our sample average, and our sample standard deviation. We now need to specify an alpha. I will choose an alpha of 0.05, which is the most commonly used alpha. This will result in us being 95% sure of our conclusion. To finish out the template, uh, we need a mean for our hypothesis. So let's hypothesize a value of the mean that is equal to 73. The standard error of the mean is our first calculation and it is going to equal the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. I will use the method of raising to the 0.5. You could alternatively use the square root function to find the square root of the sample size n. Our next calculation will be to calculate the t-test. Now, in order to calculate the t-test, we're essentially going through the standardization process. In other words, we're going to start with something that is normally distributed, which is our sample average. We are going to shift it to the left by its mean, which in this case is our hypothesized mean. We are going to rescale it by its own standard error. That is, we're going to divide by the standard error of the mean so that we go from something that is normally distributed to something that is standard normally distributed, or in this case, because we're using a sample estimate of the standard deviation, uh, something that is distributed t with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So our t-test in this case is 
in order for us to come to a conclusion, that is to either reject the null hypothesis or to fail to reject the null hypothesis, we need a standard that is acceptable. Uh, so we're going to need to find our critical values. Because we're starting with alpha or a probability and getting to a t value, we will be using uh, the t inverse function. t dot inverse, and now we need our probability. So this function will return the t value such that the area to the left of the t value is 0 0.05. In order to define which t distribution we're working with, we also need to indicate the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for a test of the population mean are equal to n minus 1. So our critical value for a one-tail test, that is a left-tail test, is negative 1.691. And because the t-distribution is symmetric about 0, we can use the formula negative 1 times the above in order to get the t-value such that the area to the right is equal to alpha or 0 0.05. So the critical value for a left-tailed test is negative 1.69. In order to reject the null hypothesis, you will need a result that is less than negative 1.69. The t critical value for a right-tailed test with alpha 0 0.05 is 1.69. You will need a value that is greater than 1.69 in, in for your t-test in order to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Uh, finally, let's put together our critical values for a two-tailed test. That would be the alternative hypothesis in this case uh, that mu is not equal to 73. In order to find this, we will once again utilize the t.inverse. In this case, the probability will be equal to alpha over 2. And once again, the degrees of freedom are n minus 1. And on the other side of things, we simply need to utilize the fact that the t distribution is symmetrically distributed about 0. So now we have our critical values. The other way that we can use to come to a conclusion that is to either reject the null hypothesis or to fail to reject the null hypothesis is by considering the p-values. And the p-values are handy because it's a simple rule. If your p-value is less than alpha, then you're going to go ahead and reject the null. Um, so let's put the formulas together for these. In this case, we are going to be looking for areas that relate to t-test. So just as alpha is the area to the left of negative 1.691, our p-value for a left tail test will be the area to the left of our t-test. And in order to find that, we will use t-dist. And we need to put in the t value. We will need also to include the degrees of freedom, n minus 1. And then we will use true to indicate that we are looking for the cumulative return, or the area under the t distribution to the left of t test. And as you can see, with a large p value here, we would never reject a left-tailed test. That is, we could never prove that the population mean was less than 73. Let's look at the p-value as it relates to the right tail test. Now, just as alpha is the area to the right of 1.691, or our t-critical value, we are looking for the area to the right of our t-test. And because we have the area to the left of our t-test, all we need to do is to find the area under the whole curve, which is 1, 
minus the area to the left of our t-test, and we will be left with the p-value for right tail test in this case. And as you can see with alpha of 0 0.05, we would just barely not be able to reject. That is, we could almost but not quite prove that the population mean was greater than 73. There just isn't quite enough evidence in this case. Finally, our two-tailed test. In order for us to find the p-value for a two-tailed test, we need to find both the area to the right of 1.6892 and add to that the area to the left of negative 1.6892. So to set the stage for this so that we can find the p-value accurately for both cases where the t-test is positive and negative, the first thing we need to do is to find the minimum of the areas above and then we'll take the smaller of the two areas and multiply it by two. And we can see that for this test value, the p-value is going to be twice that of a one-tail right-tailed test. It's going to equal 0 0.1003. So we will not be able to reject a two-tailed test even if alpha was 0.1 or in other words we wanted to be 90 percent confident and we will be unable to reject a right tail test if alpha is 0 0.05 or if we want to be 95 percent certain however we could reject the null hypothesis for a right tailed test in other words we could prove the alternative that the population mean is greater than 73 if alpha were 0 0.01, or rather 0 0.1. In other words, if we wanted to be 90% certain. And in this case, our t-test would be more extreme than our t-critical value, and also our p-value would be less than our alpha. So um, feel free to make use of the clear form button to transition between problems. And if you would like to see how to add the clear form button, go ahead and click the link that is appearing now. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps.